everyone. Webinar, a career in nursing, is it right for you? This is a presentation of the New York State and CSEA Partnership for Education and Training. My Matt Trotta, and I'll be your host for the webinar. Our facilitators today will be Mary Beth Gunner and Blanca Gonzalez Parker. In the mute everyone's phone, keep background noise to a minimum. If you at any time during the webinar, you can click on the raise hand button at the bottom of the participants panel. It's a gray colored icon of a hand in the air next to that green check mark. And with that, you'll be able to speak with us over your phone or through your computer uh, microphone. After you unmute yourself by right clicking on your name in the participants panel. At any uh, time during the webinar today, you could also message us in that chat panel with a question or comment. I'll be watching for those. Please all participants is selected in the send to drop down. And when you finish typing, you can click the send button, please. I mentioned previously, today's webinar is sponsored by the New York State and CSEA Partnership for Education and Training, or many people refer to it, the partnership. Wondering what is the partnership exactly? Well, for those of you who aren't familiar with us already, the partnership is an organization that administers education and training programs for CSEA represented employees through labor management cooperation. It's fund negotiated agreements between New York State and CSEA. The partnership offers in person classroom training, online learning, educational advisement services, grants, tuition benefits, management services, and education and training programs, including this webinar you're attending right now. The Joint Labor Management Organization, who is to promote career mobility, improve job skills, support place safety and health, and protective labor management relations. About us on our website or by calling us directly. And I'll contact information again at the end of the webinar. Now, know a bit more about the partnership, we can get started. I'm going to the webinar over to our instructor, Mary Beth. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to A Career in Nursing, Is It Right for You? My name is Mary Beth Gunner, and I'm the coordinator of Advising Services. I'm also an advisor here at the partnership. I'm going to be also joined by Blanca Gonzalez Parker, who is the Safety and Health Program Coordinator at the partnership is also a registered nurse. We'd like to begin today's webinar by highlighting the importance of the nursing pr profession to New York State. If events of 2020 have taught us anything, it is that the value of healthcare workers cannot be overestimated. Nurse has been at the forefront of the COVID-19 pandemic and responsible for diagnostic testing, contact tracing, call center responses, Telehealth assessments and, of course, for care for patients who are fighting for their lives, oftentimes knowing that their own lives are at risk. As we today's webinar, we'd like you to know that New York State needs nurses more than ever, and you to consider whether it could be the right career choice for you. Let me uh, share with you the objectives that we have for you for today's webinar. Today, we're going to discuss various careers in the nursing field and differentiate the job responsibilities, the education requirements, the salaries, and the job outlook for each level of nursing. We will also look at New York State nursing licensing requirements, and we're going to explore nursing titles in New York State government. In the second half of the webinar, we will explore the demands and rewards of nursing and the personal quality and habits of successful nursing students. It's intended to provide you with information about careers in nursing and for you to think about whether nursing is appropriate career choice for you. And we're really glad that you're here today. We'd like to start by asking you a question about your plans for pursuing an educational program in nursing. So currently enrolled in a, pro in a nursing program now. Our course is now so you can apply for a nursing program in the future. Or are you thinking about going to school for nursing? Or are you unsure of your plan? 
Okay, if I have opened the poll on the right-hand side of the screen, please your mouse and click the option A, B, C, or D that best represents your current plans. So again, what are your plans for a nursing career? A, I'm enrolled in a nursing program now. B, I'm taking courses to be able to apply for a program. C, considering going into a nursing-related career. Or e, I'm not sure. And has logged their uh, uh, vote. I'm able to close the poll and show the results in that same right-hand panel. Please remember to click the Submit button at the bottom so that it registers your, your, your vote. And in just a few seconds, WebEx is telling me I'll be able to show what we got here. Thank you, everyone, for your responses. What plans for a nursing career? Five, three, two, one. And there, Mary Beth, we have a large majority for C. I am considering going into a nursing related career. Got a few responses for I'm enrolled now and I'm taking courses also. Great, that's perfect actually. Um, well, thank you for sharing your responses, everyone. Uh, I'm not surprised by the results. I'm, I'm glad that uh, everybody who came, I believe that regardless of where you are in your plan, we that there's something here for you today and um, we hope that you'll find today's webinar helpful as we move forward. Okay, keep going. So let's start by talking about the levels of careers. There are different levels of careers in the nursing field. Um, note that or certain nurse assistants, they are nursing assistants and not actual nurses. The nurse can be used to broadly describe several careers, including also licensed practical nurses, LPNs, registered nurses, RNs, Nurses, NPs, and little nurse specialists, C and S. We're going to be using these terms throughout the webinar, and we'll discuss how they differ from one another. I'm going to turn things over to Blanca now, and she'll introduce herself and discuss things like scope of practice and more about CNA. Thank you. Hello, I'm as Mary Beth mentioned. My name is Blanca, and I am the program coordinator for safety and health at the partnership well as a registered nurse. I am an RNBSN and have experience in emergency medicine, public health, and obstetrics and gynecology. I'd like to begin by asking you another question. How many of you know the meaning of scope of practice? If you do, please share your ideas in the chat box. Okay, if you could please type in your ideas about this term in the chat panel. You can find it at the bottom right-hand side of the screen is scope of practice as it applies to nursing. Do have moments to type those in and click the send button once complete. Please more participants is in the drop down. Okay, we've got uh, is it specialty as a nurse? Is it level of nursing duties? People unsure? And is it what is expected of the nurse? Okay, they're all really um, good answers. It, it's sort of all of those. Um, scope of practice refers to the tasks that nurses can and cannot perform in their work. These tasks are determined by a board of nursing for each state. Each level of nursing will have a different scope of practice. For example, scope of this for LPNs or licensed practical nurses will be different from registered nurses or RNs. RNs will be different than nurse practitioners and PEs, and it's really important for nurses to know their scope of practice and limitations. Nurse practice outside of their scope of practice could be charged with professional misconduct. Are there questions or comments on scope of practice? If you please raise your hand or you can type it in chat. And a few uh, more responses came in. Uh, we're right on the money. What is expected of nurse? What you are allowed to do under your license? What you can do in your job? Etc. Thank you, everyone, for those. Excellent. If you are a call-in user calling in on your phone today, that's how it shows up on our participants panel. If you could also message tech back up, 
let Tim know who you are and uh, what your full name is, please, first and last. And I don't see any questions about scope of practice, Blonde, but I'll watch the chat panel. Okay, thank you. So we're going to start by talking about certified nurse assistants, or CNAs. Certified nurse assistant meet an entry point into nursing. It's a way for you to try out the healthcare field without investing an extensive amount of your time and money. The training required for CNAs is the shortest in the field of nursing. It consists of a minimum of 100 hours, which may be completed in three to eight weeks, in a combination of classroom and practical work. At the end of training, candidates may take a competency exam, which, if passed, awards a certification. Quote, not all nurse assistants are certified. However, certification is required to work in nursing homes or long-term care facilities. C programs are generally available at colleges through their adult education departments or educational opportunity centers, EOCs. EOCs. Some homes have their own programs as well. As a CNA in New York State, you may be 18 years of age, pass a background check, pass a physical exam, obtain a tuberculosis test with a negative result, provide documentation that all your required immunizations are up to date. CNA assist patients with daily routines, including bathing, feeding, toileting, and dressing. They are responsible for treating patients in a safe manner. You may have heard of patient handling take signs of patients, observing and recording a patient's behavior, and see it really quite early the eyes and ears for nurses and doctors. They spend the most time with the patients and notice the daily changes in a patient's progress, which they then report to nurses. CNAs work under the direct supervision of LPNs and RNs. So Alex, we have a question oh, sure. from Jean. Is the scope of this, does that vary from state to state? Sometimes um, states will team up with one another and create um, a conference of, of nursing. And we are in New York State. We have the same uh, scope in terms of for ends as Massachusetts and Connecticut. Oh, thank you. Hopefully that answers your question. So let's get a quick question. Are assistants licensed in New York State? If the answer is yes, please click on the green check at the bottom of the participants panel. And if the answer is no, please click on the red X in that same area. Are CNAs licensed in New York? Yes or no? no. Green check or red X? The checks are uh, by the raise hand button. If you're joining us on a mobile device, you can put it in the chat panel because you may not be able to access those. Your responses in chat, let's see, Blanca. Yeah, no, 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 yes, no, yes. Slight yes is there, and I've got a few more yeses with the check marks as well. So it's about two-thirds yes to no. Okay, so the answer is no. Assistants may take a certification exam to become certified. They're not licensed by the New York State Education Department. Now let's discuss LPNs. Nays, LPNs provide basic care to patients. However, LPNs are permitted to perform the following additional activities. Administrations, collect specimens, implement plans created by RNs, nurse assistants, commute information to patients and families, and in some studies, LPNs can start an IV but New York State requires that the works provide the LPN with additional training first. For a more listing of LPN duties in New York State, go to www.op.nyz.gov. That site is State Education Office of Professions. It has all of the requirements, rules, and regulations, educational programs, and more for licensed and certified professions in the state of New York. Uh, to that question we had a few moments ago, Every state has um, some form of office of profession, so you can investigate what the scope of practice is specific to the state you're looking in. 
to ask a quick question. Can you have a job duty that an LPN can perform, which falls outside of the scope of practice of a CNA? If you have a job duty that an LPN can perform, but a CNA cannot, please write job duty in the chat box. Please remember all participants in there so everyone can see. I'll try to keep up with the responses. Let's see what we have. Injections, shots, assication, drawing blood, tube feeding, IVs. These sound good to me, but I, you know better than me, Blanca. Yep, absolutely. Things that an LPN can perform, but CNAs, that's outside of their scope of practice. Yep. Let me see. Reading as well. Very big. Very good. I use all of these. Catheter, I think, is is what the person is trying to write. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, uh, the two key examples are that LPNs are able to administer medications and collect specimens. So, um, everyone, thank you very, very much. You put in some very good examples. So let's move on to RNs. Understandably, some people may confuse an LPN with an RN. They perform any of the same functions. However, there are some key differences. RNs have a wider scope of practice. The R scope of practice is more complex. It includes potentially dangerous tasks, such as caring for patients who are critically ill and require advanced life support. RNs also have decision-making responsibilities, and they are not required to work under other nurses. In addition, RNs complete more education and must pass the RN version of the nurse licensing exam known as the NCLEX. RNs interpret clinical data and conduct nursing assessments. They all develop and evaluate nursing treatment plans and supervise LPNs and CNAs. They can administer intravenous fluids, medications, and blood products without further training. Most notably, seen during the COVID-19 pandemic, RNs can provide care to patients on ventilators and LPNs cannot. Specific duties vary within the medical setting, circumstances, and the state in which you practice. For more information, please check out that website. Uh, it's www.op.niza.gov again. And a list with more specific tasks of the N and versus the LPN versus the CNA are are also included in your handouts. And if you printed your webinar handouts yet, that's fine. You can do so later after the webinar. To do that, simply go back to your original email inviting you to the webinar, and they will be attached there. Think about the job duties we've discussed for LPNs and RS. Think that a nurse caring for a critically ill patient with COVID-19 would likely be an RN or an LPN. Do you think the correct answer is LPN or RN in the chat box? So would a nurse caring for a critically ill patient with COVID-19 in New York State would likely be an LPN or an RN? Okay. Many responses for RN, almost all of them. I think all of them say RN. I'm looking at the list as well. I see that we have someone that thinks that both. Responded both. Okay. So um, that is a good point. They can assist in RN, but they cannot care. An LPN cannot care for a critically ill patient solo. So yes, they can assist in RN, but RN um, has the license clearance to take care of that patient independently. So the answers are RN. Only RNs can care for the ventilator component of a critically ill patient, regardless of a state of emergency or pandemic declaration. The point of question is to illustrate that the scope of practice for each profession does not typically change, regardless of emergency circumstances. That's important to be aware of the key differences between all levels of nursing. Oh, sorry. 
If you need to find those webinar uh, handouts, they were in an email from yesterday afternoon where you can fill them. Okay, move on to nursing criteria. Nursing is a licensed profession. In order to be an LPN, you must be at least 17 years old. To be an RN, you must be at least 18 years old. Professions require that you have a high school diploma or equivalent. Criminal background check, including a drug test, good moral character, and complete infection control and barrier precautions course. You also meet education and examination requirements depending on the place where you're going to go to school. R also have to complete a child abuse identification and reporting course because RNs are mandated reporters of child abuse in New York State. Okay, that we've discussed what CNAs, LPNs, and RNs do, I'd like to ask you where you think these professionals work. I write examples of workplaces for CNAs, LPNs, and RNs in the chat box. Keep up. <laughs> Nursing home. Insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Hospital. Schools, uh, prisons, rooms, assisted living. Wow. Cruise and That is true. I think I answer cruises. <laughs> it, it, it's true, but it, it's hard to get that job, let me tell you. <laughs> so um, these are great answers. Thank you very much. So CNAs, LPNs, and RNs can work in a variety of settings, which you've all um, touched upon, including hospitals, group homes, medical offices, treatment centers. But in these types of healthcare workers are currently contributing to COVID-19 response and working in settings that you may not have thought about before, contact tracing centers and points of dispensing known as pods. For those who may not be familiar with the term point of dispensing, that refers to a location where essential goods or services can be distributed to a lot of people at once during an emergency. A common example of a pod seen as part of the COVID-19 response are those drive-through testing sites, which you may or may not have seen, um, but definitely probably seen them on the news. We actually in Albany County and in Oswego County will be having um, a flu pod coming up. So that's another example of a, of a more common pod. So before we move on, does anyone have any questions about this topic? If you shouldn't, you can raise your hand or type it in the chat panel. So to see where they work and what they do, correct, Malika? Yes. Okay. No questions. I don't see any hands up and in the chat. Okay, great. So into LPNs and RNs. There are nursing careers that we will briefly mention. They are nurse practitioners or NPs, and clinical nurse specialists or CNSs. They are RNs by advanced degrees such as a master's degree or doctorate and gain certification to work in specialized areas such as pediatrics or women's health. Unlike all of the other types of professions discussed today, nurse practitioners can practice independently of a physician which is that they can prescribe medications and make treatment decisions much like a doctor can. Question, true or false? Just working in a private practice who prescribes antibiotics for a child with an ear infection is most likely a nurse practitioner. I believe that is true. You can click on the green check mark or type true in the chat panel. And if false, you can go with red X or false. Working in a private practice who prescribes antibiotics for a child with an ear infection, are they an NP? And the majority of true responses, Blanca. Yep, absolutely. So that is the correct answer. A nurse practitioner can provide care and run their own private practice and prescribe medication. I'm going to turn the webinar back over to Mary Beth so she can talk to us about what nurses study. That was a lot 
of great information. And um, before we continue and talk about what nurses do, study, I just want to point out that as I was listening to you give all of this information to our audience today, it seemed to me like scope of practice was something, a uh, very important concept that kept coming through to me. Would you say that that is something that is a very, an essential concept that, that nurses need to definitely understand well? Absolutely. Um, it's very important to pay attention to that. Um, I think any case that I know of where a nurse practice side of their scope of practice, event was good, and um, perhaps they acted that way because there was emergency, but uh, nothing ever ends well for anyone that practices outside of their scope of practice, regardless of their good intentions. So yes, it's very, very important. And what about CNAs? I just want to make sure I understand that. So because they're not actual nurses, they also, their scope is the most limited, right? True. Um, you can, as a CNA, get extra training depending on where you work. And so mm -hmm. um, one CNA may not be able to begin um, an IV or draw bloods, but a CNA at a different facility that has a certification, which typically takes a year, um, they may be able to. So it does vary, but they have the smallest. Really? Okay. Well, thank you for that information. Um, I just... I we thought that the scope of practice did seem like a very important concept and uh, learning Mary, more myself. I have to think about becoming a nurse myself. Mary, if I may, I don't want to minimize yeah. the importance, however, of a CNA. Um, CNAs are so important to patient care, and it's a great way to get your feet wet if you want to pursue something, a different kind of nursing later. And mm -hmm. um, they're a very, very important part of the medical field. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. And you have to start somewhere, too. Okay, we've talked a lot about the responsibilities of nurses and nurse assistants, and so now let's address the educational requirements for nurses. Course of study for both LPN and RN programs include uh, nursing practice, anatomy physiology, microbiology, pharmacology, medical ethics and law. The times are similar for both LPNs and RNs. The difference is that RNs take college level courses and associate or bachelor's degree level, which are in depth and more demanding. So what are some of the edu educational requirements to become an LPN? You need to complete approximately a 9 to 12 month accredited training program through either a BOCES, military, or hospital program. which is also offer LPN programs. After the training program, graduates need to pass the NCLEX, which stands the National Council Licensure Exam LPN. And they do this in order to be able to practice nursing. Okay, let's move on to educational requirements for RN. Pass to becoming a registered nurse. The first is a diploma program. You go through a hospital nursing program. In these programs, you earn a nursing diploma. A SEP is an associate's degree program in nursing, or ADN, which results in a tier college degree. Generally, you'll find these programs at community and junior colleges, some at four year colleges. The third is a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, or BSN, which is a four-year degree program at a college or university. A four-year program in nursing requires more courses for students to learn about specialty areas of nursing. Pass the hospital, associate, and bachelor's program, preparing students to take the NCLEX exam to become a licensed RN. A graduate of a bachelor's degree in nursing program still an RN just has more education. Program you choose, make certain it is recognized by the New York State Education Department. You can get the list of approved nursing programs by visiting www.op.nycd.gov before you enroll on a program or pay any money at all. As of 2017, 
Governor Andrew Cuomo signed a bill into law requiring RNs to obtain a bachelor's degree or higher within 10 years of obtaining their nursing license. This law continues to affect future nurses who graduate from a New York State Diploma Program or Associate Degree Program in Nursing. Our license honor before the month of December in 2017, anyone who was enrolled in or accepted in or waitlisted for a diploma or associate degree nursing program by December of 2017 are grandfathered in and will not be required to satisfy this requirement. Are there questions all about this law? If you have questions about this law or the courses that nurses take, please uh, raise your hand or type it in the chat box. And for any hands, Mary Beth, as well as give full seconds to type. We have, uh, could you repeat? That's the part about the uh, law effective December 2017. Um, as of December 2017, Governor Andrew Cuomo signed a bill into law requiring RNs to obtain a bachelor's degree or higher within 10 years of obtaining their nursing license. And it can you affect future nurses who graduate from a New York State diploma program or associate degree program in nursing. But that was licensed before 2017 or enrolled in a diploma program or associate degree, they're grandfathered in, so they don't have to worry about it. Thank you for repeating. Our most often BSN programs now the law change. Does that seem to be a requirement for employers? Um, I bet they are, but I'm going to defer that to Blanca. Um, yeah, they are, and um, some are working towards it. There will still be uh, programs that are two-year, but they articulate into um, four-year programs. So there's a lot of partnerships starting out there. I, I foresee that um, in state, we won't have just two year programs standalone anymore under this law. Yeah, that, Blanca, I, I think that because of the nursing you know, shortage too, the high demand for nurses, that certainly New York State wants to um, do what they can to help nurses to gain what they need to be able to work in the state. And I will say that um, though I was not a fan of this particular uh, law, I have seen with my own two eyes that, that only our education incidents, but also facilities and private hospitals, et cetera, working together to bridge programs, which we're going to talk about now, Mary Beth. Great. Right. Thank you. Okay. Dean asked, Dean asked if uh, Dean to work in a hospital. Is that relates to? Okay. I guess if you're working in a hospital, do you still need to obtain that degree within 10 years? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions at all? Okay. Move on. I do want to ask a yes or no question. Do you with bachelor's degrees have a wider scope of practice than nurses with associate degrees? If your answer is yes, then with a BSN have a wider scope of practice than an ADN, please say yes or use that green check mark. And likewise, you can type no or use the red X. And once we read through these, there was one question that right before these that I'll go back to, ladies. Uh, it looks like I have a majority yeses in the chat and all with the green check marks. So we have a majority vote for yes. They do have a wider scope of practice. Okay. Well, this is a little bit of a tough one, I think, because, and we'll talk about it. Um, the answer is actually no. Those who complete a bachelor's degree in nursing are still RNs. They take the same licensing exam as those who complete an associate degree or hospital program. However, they may earn a higher salary and have more employment options or super responsibilities because of the additional courses they take. The additional courses can also specialize in a particular area of nursing, but the scope of practice 
done in the same. So that's the key. I think I can understand this could be confusing because some people think, well, yes, you know, they have a BSM, so they may have more supervisory responsibilities. They've had more education. But we're thinking about the license here, whether they take an ABN program and get their RN or a BSN program and get their RN. They are an RN. And, you know, explained earlier, um, they want to jump in and feel free. It is the school practice for an RN remains the same. Blanca? Oh, you lined it perfectly, Mary Beth. Thank you. Okay. Anything yeah. about that? We have from Marie, how many years of experience needed for OPWDD? And after our discussion about the BSN antenna, I believe. Unfortunately, I am not familiar with the agency level requirements. I'd be happy, though, to put you in touch with someone that can answer that question. If you'd like to just um, perhaps in the chat box and send it directly to the tech backup or to Matt. I'm happy to follow up. I want to provide your email, and you don't have to do that to all participants. You can select someone, whether it's myself or Blanca or Mary Beth or tech backup, and that will only person would see your email if you so choose. We have a few more questions. Does the two years associate in community college, will that automatically upgrade to a BS? If you end up with a two-year degree in a community college, you will then to obtain or achieve a BSN, you want to go on to a four-year degree. And as Blanc mentioned earlier, there are many what they call articulation agreements. There's also bridge programs, which we're going to talk about, and um, you would you that would maybe help to. Um, sort of grease the wheels to get you into the next program, but you would need to take an additional two years. Blanca? Great. Um, so basically, you can go to your school, a community college, become an RN if you pass your exam, and as soon as you pass that exam, you have to do a BSN within uh, 10 years. Okay, thank you. BSN, can they teach with that, that degree? No, fortunately they cannot. I know this firsthand. I am a BSN. I also have a master's in public health, um, but I cannot teach in New York State. New York State requires that you have a master's degree specifically in nursing. Okay. Thank you. And finally, are LPNs usually not able to work in hospitals even during the pandemic in New York State? Aries. I know that um, we don't have many as we used to, but I can say that there are none in hospitals. Okay. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for your questions. Right. And I see that Teresa said that she finds it very motivational to continue on, and that's good. That's a good thing. Oh. Yeah. Well, so, I have music to my ears. We need nurses. <laughs> We do. We do. Okay. So um, there's nothing else I'm going to say. Um, so if you want to go to school to become a nurse, you may be asking yourself, well, what do I do next? Well, let's say that nursing programs, both LPN and RN, they are competitive. And what we mean by that is they don't accept everyone. The, a nurse education, it, it can be challenging, and schools accept candidates that they believe will succeed in the program and in the field. And that's what you want. Um, there are also many prerequisite courses, generally in math or science, and these are courses that you have to take and pass before you apply to the nursing program. Usually it's like biology, anatomy, physiology, microbiology. Um, most nursing programs require applicants to complete a personal interview and pass an entrance exam, such as the test of essential academic skills, or it's also known as an acronym of TEAS. You can find more information um, about the TEAS in your handout. There's one specific note uh, about that because that is one of the um, more used entrance exams by schools in 
state. A specific entrance exam varies from program to program, so it's important to know which test your program requires. And I have listed the names of some entrance exams in your handout, so you can look at those. And see, these exams test knowledge of high school math, English, science, and some of them test reading as well. They generally run about three and a half hours. They're usually multiple choice. Let's say you completed an LPN program but decided that you wanted to become an RN. There are a nursing transition or a bridge program. We mentioned these before. Um, the different types of transition programs are an N to become an RN, an ADN to becoming a BSN, or a nursing bachelor's degree to become a BSN. Who decide they want to become RNs may be able to reduce the amount of time they spend in college to earn either an associate or a bachelor's degree in nursing. One of these. Some colleges also offer challenge exams or transition courses where students may earn credits based on the results of exams or transition courses. Please know all colleges are different and they have their own requirements. Students should speak with a college advisor or someone from the nursing department of the college that they're interested in. If you have an associate's degree in nursing and you decide you want to earn a bachelor's degree in nursing, you need to apply for a four-year college or university and complete at least 60 additional credits for a minimum of 120 credits. 120 is what your bachelor's degree requires. The first 60 credits may be transferred from an associate's degree program. The remaining 60 will consist of liberal arts courses and electives and more specialty courses. Applicants will to meet the general admission criteria of the college as well as the nursing department criteria. There are also college programs where students with nursing bachelor's degrees can earn a BSN and be able to take the NCLEX licensing exam at the completion of the program. These programs are called accelerated or second degree programs. They generally cover the nuts and bolts of nursing, that is a large nursing and health related courses and clinical experience. The admission requirements are difficult. Usually, you do need a GPA, grade point average of 3.0 or higher. Well, it is fairly intense because you're taking the same required courses and clinical components in a short amount of time. Other questions on the various types of nursing education programs? Any question? You can raise your hand or type it in chat. Um, Tamika and some others are discussing the shortage of nurses in New York and how it would be nice. Nice if there was flexibility on current civil service jobs, the scheduling to make it possible to attend nursing school. And because you're going to school for RN, you can take the LPN boards prior to finishing RN. Put that there. Yes. Um, Kadrina, you are correct. I actually have um, a lot of friends that, the majority of them, that when we're pursuing our RN, uh, they at one, so the RN program was two years. After one year, they took their LPN boards and be uh, working as LPNs in the Capital District, actually. So, and they did very well doing that. I didn't do that because I had small children, but it is an option. Great. Hey. Question about uh, the the degree path, Mary Beth, but we'll watch for those. All right. And I just want to. Uh, well, shout out to Tamika. I, I understand your thoughts on, you know, wishing for flexibility. Um, I don't want that. It's hard, I think, when we're, you know, if you're an adult student and you're juggling you know, family and different responsibilities. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that's up to each of them. And, uh, you know, that we, we don't really have any control over. Um, but I do, you know, we will talk more about um, how to, uh, Finance education, and we do also have other webinars on coming up on management and establishment, so that might be helpful to you in the future as well. Okay, um, let's see. We do, Mary Beth, how do you go about applying for LPN and CLEX after one year of RN studies? I didn't want to step on your toes. Um, 
most programs, um, most programs, literally I found out about it on the bulletin board, but it is something that they ask you if you're interested in at about the halfway mark. And every school keeps a log of how many students want to take the test, and then they submit it actually to the testing on your behalf. So believe me, you will hear about it ahead of time. Also, Yolanda, I switch in here, and yes, I'm happy to find out. I'll begin with OPW and get back to you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, let's say that you've decided to pursue a nursing education. I'd want to know, and you probably want to know, well, how much is it going to cost? Education varies. Uh, this is due to the difference between programs at public institutions, such as C's, SUNY, UNI colleges, and institutions, such as hospital programs and private colleges. General, however, tuition ranges are as follows. For a senior clinic, um, certified nurse assistant is from $1,150 to $1,000 for an LPN. The cost of education can range from $7,500 to $30,000. Um, for RN associates, it can range from $10,300 to $47,000. Uh, for an bachelor's, $35,500 to $186. And for an MP or um, CNS, clinical, um, a clinical specialist, it can be $63,000 to $200,000 or more. And keep in mind that these costs are for tuition only. So um, in addition to books, which may cost up to $1,000 per semester, nurses are required to buy equipment, uniforms, and liability insurance. Um, this could up to another thousand. Now, NAs are nurse assistants, so they actually don't have to pay the additional high cost of textbooks and equipment. Um, let me ask you before we move on, does this seem accurate to you? This Thing that we've pulled. Um, yes, they do definitely seem um, accurate. It, it really has to do with the fact that you can pursue your education at a private institution, which costs more money, or a state institution. And, um, I did mention real quick the point about these costs being for tuition only. When you're in a nursing school, you will have to pay for things like your stethoscope, your waterproof shoes, um, uniform, and also when investigating education programs, nursing programs, um, you have to find out if they require books that are made specifically for that, that school. I'll give you an example. My daughter is taking courses at a local community college, and we are not able to buy her used textbooks, which would save us a lot of money, because the, um, there's a publishing company that makes a book, a textbook, specific to the program at that College. So those are all sorts of things you wouldn't think of asking, but you don't want to be surprised. Right, good point. So if your um, job notes or if you go back and look over this information and you start with questions that you might want to ask when you are interviewing, you know, because you might be interviewed for a college, you want to ask questions too. That might be a good question. Thanks for bringing that up, Blanca. Okay. A few questions, but in the interest of time, I'd like to save them for the end, if that's okay, that we can make sure, sure we get through what uh, we need to cover, and then we can have a Q&A at the end. So I'll note the questions. Oh, sounds good. All, All right. right. Sure. Um, are you going to pay for this nursing education? I've, I've given you these numbers. Um, well, we'll offer a webinar called Financing Your Education on this topic, because there's so much information. Um, I'm, not, I'm only able to touch on it briefly today. But these resources are also listed in your handout. You may, may want to start by completing and submitting a free application for federal student aid or FAFSA to this form. This form is used to apply for federal and state grants and loans. Uh, the Higher Education Services Corporation, HESC, is a New York State financial aid agency and that's their student financial aid programs for New York State residents. The Center's Retraining Initiative, HW. I'm sorry, the, yeah, the Health Workers Retraining Initiative, the grant program funded by the Department of Health. It was created to encourage people to be current or higher level nurses. You need to employ 
be employed by certain agencies with our state apply to this grant. Contact numbers and agencies are listed in your handout. Nurses you know are currently in high demand. There are also scholarships out there, but you will need to be proactive about finding them. We do a guide on searching for scholarships, which is also included in the handout. Employers can offer education benefits, which we're going to talk about next. For CSEA represented New York State employees, the partnership tuition benefits program that can help pay for tuition towards your chosen degree. There's also a statewide targeted nursing program for employees enrolled in nursing program. The target program provides two additional tuition benefits in addition to the two standard tuition benefits that you receive. This program is open to all eligible New York State employees regardless of agency of employment. The can also reimburse CSA, CSA represented New York State employees for the NCLEX exam or for a certification exam in a nursing assistance program. I'll tell you that um, a lot of students use our tuition benefits and uh, it's very helpful to them. One thing I'm usually very surprised about is that we also will reimburse for the NCLEX exam, both at the LPN level and the NCLEX level, and they are very happy to, to learn about that. Um, you want to know about that as well. Um, I also talked about uh, the job outlook and wages. Um, we talked about uh, after all your hard work uh, to come to and pay for your nursing education or training, the job outlook for careers in the nursing field is um, average. Depending on experience, you may or not stay higher or lower in the range. Experience and geographical location can influence what your actual salary will be, but in general, the annual salary ranges in New York State are as follows. For a CNA, it's between $24,000 and $41,000. For an between $34,000 and $62,000. RN is between $45,000 and $115,000. NP or a CNS is between 50,000 and 130,000. And by the way, most of this data was taken from the Occupational Information Network, which is a U.S. Department of Labor website, which can be found in your in your handout. Um, we talked a lot previously about you know what it costs to go to a nursing program to attend one, but as you can see, your hard work does pay off. Would you say that's pretty accurate, Blanca? Absolutely. Okay. That's it. So um, mentioning the tuition benefits that we have, that can help you. Um, and please definitely uh, let us know um, if you wanted to have more information on the tuition benefits that offered that I, that I mentioned previously. Um, that's another way that can help you to pay a nursing program. Um, for more information on the partnership tuition benefits, you can visit, visit www.nyscsbapartnership.org or call a partnership advisor at the number that is located in your handout. And also, just wanted to mention um, that of this webinar, um, we'll probably mention this again, but we're going to be sending out a brief three-question survey in the next two days after this was over, and um, we had time to process and consider this information um, and the sources that we provided today. We're going to send out a survey, and it will help the advisors, myself and the others, know what type of assistance we can provide you if you're ready for next steps. So look for this, um, and let we can assist you in the future, because we are Definitely um, happy to help you. Can I ask about anything that I've gone over so far? I have a few questions in the chat, uh, Mary Beth. Hopefully we can circle back to those. I do have them all on a little notepad. Uh, okay, great. Go with that. All New York State employees, you're going to want to know how to locate information about nursing employment in New York State government. 
There is a New York State website listed in your handouts, which has information to assist you with your quest for nurse employment within New York State. The website, www.cs.ny.gov nursing contains resources such as a list of New York State agencies that employ nurses, placements and internships with New York State agencies, frequent nursing questions and answers, list of New York State nursing titles and specialty areas, and more. For more information on these nursing titles, you can go to the website of the Credibility Office and explore more using the glossary of occupational titles called Got It. The web for the Criminal Mobility Office and the Got It tool is located at www.careermobilityoffice.cs.ni.gov. Got It allows you to search for various nursing and nurse-related titles and find a job description, minimum qualifications, salary grade level, and a career ladder. Or visit this website for you right now. Time for a virtual field trip. So go up. This slide shows you what the Got It Pat page looks like. In a moment, you're learning how to conduct a Got It search. But later, you can search for other nursing titles or any other titles within New York State government on your own. Keep in mind, you won't be seeing job vacancies. Got It is an informational tool, not a search tool. By the way, we offer another webinar on how to use Got It. So if you're interested in learning more about it, please look at our webinar listings in our catalog. Uh, you can also view a recording of this webinar in the Slim system. So Matt, can you please bring up the Got It website? Sure. I'll test to the yes. Career Mobility website, uh, share my browser. It looks like we're going to a little bit over 4 o'clock. Hopefully that's okay for everyone, but if you do have to leave, we understand because this was scheduled for 3 to 4. But that we understand if you only had it until 4 o'clock, and we apologize for that. Okay, so here's the browser. If I type in career, I've got a history here, CMO slash got it. Okay, Beth. So how about we search for the nurse for the little nursing one assistant in the cured box, and we will click on search. Okay, you can see. You got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the paragraph on the title page identifies the number of positions of uh, statewide. Sorry, right there. If yeah. currently. There's also live links to do a breakdown of positions by county as well as a listing of New York State agencies that employ this position. You keep scrolling on it. And then we can see the career ladder for this title and a link to current salary schedule. Sure. Here's the career ladder. I'll send it one, nursing assistant one, assistant two, and assistant certified. And then here's a link to that salary schedule as well. Great. Cool information. And below the career ladder, you're going to see a job description, information, minimum qualifications, and how to apply. News to got it. I'm sorry we couldn't go into more detail using this tool, but please contact the Career Mobility Office if you want more information using Got It. Their contact information is listed on your handouts. Also, I did want to mention that when you do get to this site, they all have a little video on how to use the Got It site. Very short, brief video, so you can always watch that too. Um, again, in just time, um, we'll wait. If there's any questions about this, we can get to them at the end. Right now, I'd actually like to turn this back to Maka and going to wrap up by telling us what it's like to be a nursing student and to work as a nurse, which is important. Okay, so um, let's ask a quick chat question in the interest of time. On average, how much do you think nursing students study per week? Okay. Uh, how many hours do you all think that nursing students use for studying? Hours per week, what is the number that you would guess? We have 30, 60, 20, okay. 25, 20. Wow, we're all in the double digits, clearly. What do you think, Monica? Yeah, uh, and that's what we're trying to illustrate. It does take a lot of time. So the average is 25 to 30, which means that you have people who study more than that and people who study less. 
steps in that. One thing to take into account is whether or not English is your first language. If English is not your first language, which is the case with me, it will take you longer. That's per week. Okay, so let's have another question real quick. What habits and support systems do you feel are important for working nursing students to be successful? Folk type your ideas about this question in the chat box. What habits and support systems are important for nursing students to succeed? Family support, good time management. Group is amazing. Yes, it's ready. They are ready. Okay, they're all excellent examples. But So let's talk about aptitude. There are certain subject areas that nursing students should be interested in, and examples of those are anatomy, physiology, microbiology, math, and technology. Something that gets over oftentimes is an interest in communication and human behavior. Okay, so, so very, very important. At careers, there are demands as well as rewards. Some of the demands of nursing are that nurses are required to lift patients, move equipment, and be on their feet for long hours. In addition to being physically difficult, can also be emotionally exhausting. For example, you may have to deal with stressful situations, such as the death of a patient or a patient who may have been abused. In addition, nurses are often working when their spouses and families have time off, and there are times when they will have to stay past their shift. That happened the very first Christmas that I worked. I had to work an extra 14 hours. At many jobs, there is duration due to limits on your decision making, particularly involving patient care plans and orders. Last but not least, nurses are exposed to germs and unpleasant body fluids, blood, urine, and so on. Mary, you want to wrap up for us? Um, those are all important things to know, and I think it's important to show things, but we also want to talk about that the field of nursing at any level has the potential to be a very rewarding career. We know it's demanding to you. There are many rewards. And just quickly, um, I'd like the audience to just type in what they think some of the rewards of nursing are. Just what comes to mind. Type in your ideas about the rewards of nursing. Makes it worthwhile and make those hours of study and hard effort worth it. Helping unity able to put a smile on someone's face when it recovers, prestige, quality care, people feel they're excellent. Those are rewards, absolutely. Self-worth. I love all of these. Excellent answers, everyone. Love. I love all of them. Thank you for all of these. You know, it's better than the few that I was going to bring up as well. You know, making a difference in someone's life, excellent wages, job security, um, advancement, and I want to add one more, being a hero. And I, and I have to say that especially in the past six to seven months during this pandemic that we've all been living through, I have seen many nurses um, who have been heroes, uh, including Blanca. So, um, you know, since nurses are in high demand, just remember, you can go anywhere and have the skills to be employed as a nurse. Uh, we also uh, um, we want to remember the personal qualities that are important to being successful in being a nurse. We know that you communicate with patients, Doctor, a lot of other health professionals. So being able to communicate with all kinds of people and listen well is important. Remember, always some patients, such as those with dementia, that have altered views of reality. Sometimes they can be combative or angry with nurses or CNAs. We know they'll be trying on your patients. And empathy, or, empathy are obvious skills in providing care to those who need comfort. As mentioned earlier, nursing can be exhausting. It can be stressful. Physical, emotional, stamina are important too. You got to take care of yourself. Um, 
attention to details and the ability to multitask are also crucial since you're dealing with people's lives. You do need to take your time reading the charts so you don't miss an important detail. And follow directions because mistakes could be fatal. It's important to know your own limitations. Hopefully, today, everyone, you've acquired some knowledge about the field of nursing. We couldn't ever everything during this webinar. We, we want to cover as much as we could, but don't forget that there's other resources to help you out further, which are included in your handout. And the way to learn about a career is to talk to people who are working in the job that you're considering. This is called informational interviewing. You're not actually interviewing for a job, you're interviewing the person to learn about what they do. Uh, educational guide on this topic that describes the process that is set up an informational interview, and it actually even includes a list of sample questions that you can use. That is also in your handout. Visited the Career Mobility Office Got It website, which if you remember is a New York State website with all the job titles in New York State government. We encourage you to continue searching and learning more about job titles in nursing using Got It. And for more time, I just wanted to mention that the Partnership Advisors are a great resource for you for acquiring information and locating, um, paying for training and college programs. Please call us if you have questions. And we're going to be um, at times to, you know, focus this all. We're going to be sending out a, a very, very brief three-question survey in the next few days. We hope that you will respond to that. Thank you. Mary Beth and Blanca, both for this excellent webinar. So much information. Uh, everyone, before we wrap up, if you have to go, again, we understand we ran a little bit over and we apologize for that. When you do leave WebEx for this training in your browser window, there will be a evaluation of the webinar. It may come with a warning, which may look scary. It is not, it's just WebEx telling you that you're going to a different uh, web address and that is the address for our evaluation. Uh, URL.com slash and then a number. You can it. It's the link to get to webinar evaluation, and we thank you in advance for taking a few moments to fill that out and let us know how we did. They're thanking us right now in the chat panel as well. Uh, we do have time for the Q&A. I recorded uh, five or six questions in the order that they came in, and we can go over those now with Blanca and Mary Beth. Again, if you have time, please stay with us and include any more questions or comments. Otherwise, thank you very much, and we will see you soon. And be on the lookout for a survey about advancement and careers in nursing. Let me see. I have my notepad here. Katrina uh, says, I heard you say BOCES. Do they actually have an RN program? Most BOCES actually have... Um, CNE, um, some type of LPN program. Blanca, I'm not familiar with any that have RN programs. Are you? you? But we have LPN programs, CNA to LPN, and then the LPN articulates automatically, meaning you don't have to apply to an associate's program. Did that make sense? Thank you. Yes. Yes, yeah, you. I asked if tuition vouchers can be used to pay for nursing school. Absolutely, yes. Um, and again, you, those who are New York State CSEA represented are, are eligible for two standard vouchers and then eligible to become part of the targeted program and get an additional two vouchers that can help you pay for nursing school, which is extremely helpful. And we'd be happy to talk to you more about that. If you want to give the advisors a call, we can help get you set up with all of uh, along the same lines, Tamika wonders if a list of schools in the Buffalo area that offer an LPN program that will accept CSEA tuition benefits be sent out. Do we have a list? Um, list of provider schools actually right on our website, but Tamika, if you want to uh, put your email address, um, and put it to the host or to the tech backup, I can actually send you a link. And those private schools, um, I don't know off the top of my head right now which schools they are, but there are some in that 
um, area of New York State, and I'd be um, able to share a link with you so that you could look through, through them. Mayor, if I may say something um, sure. re related to that topic, I actually pursued my BSN online, and for folks that might have difficulty finding a school near them, you, should, you may want to consider looking at remote learning opportunities. And, um, especially if you're working as a CNA, the hands-on component, which is the clinical, can be done at your work site sometimes. That's a point. Consider both options, and you should definitely weigh the pros and cons of each. Some people need the in-class participation. Some people can do it online. Sometimes you can save money online. So, um, it's you know, definitely something that they should look at and see if it's right for them.